Hello again. I'm Iris Fairfax. Welcome back to Buddha Bites. This is episode 11. I've had so much fun sharing my love of cooking with you. And if you like it too, I'd like you to do some things for me. First of all, I'd like for you to go into YouTube, press like, press subscribe so that you get alerts for every new episode, share with your friends, and certainly make comments on the videos. I'd like to tell you a little story about one of my childhood cooking experiences. When I was about to enter the fifth grade, I had applied to go to a magnet school. And by the time the school year began, I still had not been accepted. I was on a waiting list. There wasn't any room for me yet. So about two or three weeks into the school year, we got a phone call that there was a space for me and on I went to this brand new magnet school. Um, for, a, for a fifth grader, if really for anybody, being the new kid is always uncomfortable. Uh, but that discomfort was sort of softened by the fact that my classroom, my particular classroom, was a home economics room. And my teacher's name was Bernice Green, and she was quite a character, uh, but she was very, very friendly and kind to me. And she saw that I was interested in cooking, and I actually asked her if I could cook something for the class. And I don't know why she did it, but she said that was perfectly fine. So I chose peanut brittle. I had never made peanut brittle before. I don't know why I chose it. It was just, I thought it would be fun to do. And so I went about the business of making this peanut brittle, but it didn't turn out so well. It tasted good, but it turned out to be sort of a mass of goop. So for decades, I wondered what it was that I did wrong when I was in the fifth grade. I finally figured it out. So I'd like to show you how to make this wonderful candy that everybody loves. Foolproof recipe, let's go in and fix my old mistake. How many of you grew up with this cookbook? This is the Betty Crocker cookbook. It's been, in, uh, it's been published in several editions. Let's see which version of Betty Crocker it is this time. This was the one that looked more like a businesswoman or maybe, maybe a secretary of the time. But anyway, this was the cookbook that I was looking at when I poured through and found a recipe for peanut brittle, which gave me the grand idea that I could do peanut brittle in the fifth grade. Well, so... Um, this didn't quite work out for me. It might be perfectly fine, but I definitely made some mistakes. And um, I've since then found a recipe from the Food Network. It is another problematic recipe. So it's something that you sort of need to be able to sort of uh, common sense out some things in order to straighten out the problems with some of these recipes that we see that are not perfect. However, we are gonna start with a heavy gauge pot, uh, and I'm gonna turn this on right now. I'm gonna turn it on to high. You're gonna see that this is really not a very involved recipe ingredient wise. It takes two cups of granulated sugar. That's it. It takes a half a cup of water. All goes into the pool. And it also takes a half a cup of light corn syrup. Now, I'm gonna show you a trick for how to measure corn syrup and get it out of your measuring cup without a lot of trouble. You take nonstick spray and you spray the cup and then you pour the corn syrup in. This is gonna help the corn syrup to release. Now this is a half a cup of corn syrup. So it is a one-to-one -one ratio of water and corn syrup. So let's see how easily this corn syrup comes out of this measuring cup. There's very little swiping around that I have to do. You see how little has remained? This is all because of the nonstick spray. So, 
do remember that. By the way, I want to share with you, you know, we talked about this a few weeks ago. Um, I went shopping today and I needed some more nonstick sprays. So I, I looked at the difference in price between this Ultimate and the regular one that we've seen before. It's like a 20 cent difference. And frankly, I don't see how the one that's more expensive is any different from the original. Nonetheless, just wanted to let you know, let the buyer beware. So we take the water and the sugar and the corn syrup and we mix it together in the pot and we don't really need to do very much mixing from here. I'm just mixing it to combine and then we're going to leave it alone. But we're not going to entirely leave it alone without monitoring it. This is where I made my big mistakes in the past. The big problem with getting peanut brittle to the correct consistency is not being afraid to get it to the proper temperature. And the proper temperature is somewhere between 320 and 340 degrees. That's a lot of heat and it's rather dangerous. But it is necessary for it to not turn out into the goopy mess that I had in the fifth grade. So you need to have a candy thermometer. And this one has a little hook on the back so that it hooks right onto your pot and it can just stay there while the sugar heats up. You have another option, my favorite option, which is my lovely new purple thermopen. This is, I would say, even, I would say, superior to this one here. Both are perfectly fine. And since I'm basically going to be demonstrating in two different ways, I wanted to keep this handy. Plus, it makes me so happy. So, you want to... This, this is a recipe that's... I, I, I say it's problematic because the Food Network one actually says, oh, let this get to 340 degrees, which will take about 15 minutes. That's a doggone lie. I have mm -hmm. never seen it take 15 minutes to have sugar come up to 340 degrees. It's just insane. So um, you, just, you just want to have the courage of your convictions to watch that thermometer and not stop cooking it until it gets to the proper temperature. Now this one is a little bit closer to the proper temperature. It is getting to about the softball stage. And what the softball stage is, is the old way of, uh, of, <laughs> of gauging these temperatures. It was rather de dangerous, but what, what you would do is you would take a bowl of ice water and you would <laughs> wet, you would actually take a little bit of the sugar mixture out and dip it into the water. And if it would come to what was considered a softball, like when you roll it in your hand after you take it out of the ice water, that would show that it was the proper temperature. So there's softball, there's firm ball, there's hard crack, there's soft crack. We don't really need to worry about that with our current technology. But this is at the softball stage, which is about 230 degrees. We are going to let this mixture come all the way up to at least 280 degrees or so. I think you have a little bit of play but anywhere between 220 and 340. 340 is sort of the high end. Um, I did this before it got to 340 and I burned it and I had to start all over again. So use your common sense and use your eyes. This is gonna be a recipe that requires you to hang around. You're not going to want to stay to step, step too far away from this pot, which was another one of my mistakes, a recent one. Uh, so you'll want to stick around, find other stuff to do in the kitchen. Listen, last night I made some pe peanut brittle and I turned on a video that was a documentary of Earth, Wind & Fire. I stuck around. There's always something to do in the kitchen. So while this comes to the proper temperature, this is going to take a little bit longer but this is gonna be ready relatively soon. We're gonna take a little break and we will come back when it's time to add the rest of the stuff. See you in a little bit. 
back to the sugar. We are now at a good temperature to go on to the next step. Just so that you see, we have gotten to and it's creeping up close to 300 degrees. And this is for the one that had already been boiling before we got together. And this one has actually is actually creeping up soon too. So this is a this is also in good shape, but it still has a little bit of a ways to go. So we will rinse off our little thermo pen and go on to the next few steps. And while while I'm doing that, I want to let you know that I kept this towel here the whole time because I'm using a copper pot and sugar gets extremely hot, dangerously hot. It's like lava. And so it's easy in the midst of all the stuff that we're doing to forget and want to grab onto the pot. So I leave this there just to indicate to myself, Iris, this is hot, be careful. In the meantime, I'm going to turn this around and show you the next steps. The next step involves six ounces of unsalted butter. Now that's one, two, three, four, five, six tablespoons, a tablespoon per ounce. And so we are going to, I know that we've worked really hard on getting our temperature up nice and high, but now we're going to drop this butter in here. It's going to drop the temperature a little bit. It needs to be cubed simply because that allows for a more even distribution of the butter in a short period of time. So what I did was I sliced it lengthwise and then I turned it a quarter turn. We're going to slice it lengthwise again very carefully and then we're going to turn it one more time to just make cubes as evenly sliced as possible. Now you will see that once this goes very carefully into our sugar mixture, it's going to bubble up a tiny little bit. At this point we're going to take a wooden spoon, and it's very important that it is a wooden spoon. We can actually take this off for now and move it over to the other one. Get this evenly distributed. Now you hear a little bit of action going on here, and this is going to bubble up. This is why you have to be absolutely sure that you choose a pot that has a little bit of height to it to allow for the fact that this is going to rise up a little bit. So we take the butter, we take... Now for those of you who are worried about eating peanut brittle because of your teeth, part of the problem is solved by using baking soda. Baking soda will make your peanut brittle a little bit lighter and it'll make it a little bit more toothsome, easy to chew. So I'm going to take a little bit more than a half a teaspoon. It's just as well that I'm glad I looked at this because I was about to do three quarters. A half a teaspoon or a give or take and we are going to see science happening. So that is going to cause this all to bubble up yet again. It's going to cause the sugar mixture to get a little bit more light and airy. And now we are going to go over to our nuts. Now I'm using walnuts for this particular one. I did peanuts once and I did, uh, let's see, we've also done some cashews. Now I have not roasted these walnuts because the walnuts, I think, have enough of uh, a developed flavor without roasting them to where I don't feel like I need to get additional flavor out of them by putting them in the oven. But for cashews, you want to roast them. Pecans do very well with roasting, certainly with peanuts, any sort of a raw nut, other than, I would say, these walnuts. And that's just a matter of taste. So we're going to combine them very well. And there was something that I decided to add that wasn't in any of the recipes that I saw. Everything is better with vanilla extract. 
not the imitation stuff. I just put a little touch, maybe about a teaspoon of vanilla extract in this mixture. And I found that the vanilla actually brought out the nuttiness of the walnuts. So just a little bit, this is my own little touch, and we are gonna take this hot lava mixture and move right over here and put this on a silicone mat. I have not, ooh, that's, see how hot this is? I have not prepared the silicone mat with any oil, grease, butter, anything like that. It doesn't need it. That's the beauty of silicone. This is where I think it's a good idea to go to the expense. So I'm gonna turn off this burner and real quick, we're gonna spread this out. And you definitely do not want to use your hands for this. <laughs> that would be, you would, you would end up with a hospital visit. You don't want to do that. So even if it looks like it's a little messy to start, remember we're gonna be breaking this up. So I'm just gonna turn that off. And if you find that you need a little bit of assistance with spreading this out, I have yet another spatula and I can press it out this way. And this is going to turn into a lovely consistency when it dries out. This is giving me a bit of a hard time, but that's fine. Again, it dries, it fixes itself. One more thing to add, salt. We are going to salt this just a little bit. And I'm gonna do one more thing just to, just to press this out a little bit. I'm gonna ask my assistant if you can reach into that drawer over there. There are more sill pads. Yes, right over there. How could I do this alone? It, it's nearly impossible. So in order to press this out a little bit more, I'm going to take another one of these silicone mats and press it down. And then I'm going to leave it to do its thing. And as always, I have one or two that I did before you got here. Now you see that the silicone is actually protecting my hands. I feel that, it is, that it's warm, but this is not burning me. Now, I'm not gonna lay my hands down for any length of time, but this is helping me to flatten that out. And now I'm gonna leave it alone. And this is where you see how the peanut brittle turns out. Just like that. You see that? This is actually cashew brittle, and I did toast those cashews. And again, I did nothing to prepare my silicone mat and it comes out in a beautiful sheet like this, and you can break it up into lovely shards, just like you're accustomed to seeing in those lovely tin boxes of days gone by. There are, there are certain types of food that almost seem like they were born and not made, and I always feel like candies are that kind of thing, especially something like peanut brittle. It seems like something that just exists rather than uh, being made by human hands. Well, I wanna show you, these are the human hands that made these. And we are going to make a nice gift presentation out of our various nut brittles. So come on into the dining room and we will show you our special gift presentation. We have nut brittle. And it's sort of an amazing thing that we have it at this point because we've all been snacking on this. Uh, so it's surprising that we still have some to show you. This is the cashew brittle that I made and we will move it slightly to the side and show you the peanut brittle that I made. Oh my gosh, this is so wonderful. We, uh, I'm, I'm just so surprised that we still have some to share with you, as I said. So we're gonna make 
sort of a gift presentation. So I have a nice little cookie box left over from the holiday season and I'm going to grab some of these beautiful shards of cashew brittle. And as I said before, use any nut that you really, really like. And especially if you're concerned about your teeth, you may want to use nuts that are a little bit softer to the chew, like these cashews, like the peanuts, like the walnuts, like pecans. Um, I have actually made almond brittle before, and I used sliced almonds, onions, uh, almonds that I sliced up myself. Um, I'm worried about my teeth, so I probably won't be doing that again anytime soon. But you can use slippered almonds. That would be a wonderful option if you want to do almond brittle. Macadamia nuts are great if you're worried about something, you know, sort of maybe displacing your dental work. Uh, there's all sorts of options. And it looks like it was made by a master candy maker. And it was just made by a happy home cook. <laughs> so before I start to chew on more of these, we will box this up. And at this point, we will say thank you again for joining me. This is Iris Fairfax for Buddha Bites. Remember that you are the Buddha. See you next time.